compression. That's why I like reductionism, compression. I, I like boiling things out like you would, like you'd boil away uh, 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 maple syrup. You know, you get 14 gallons of maple syrup and you end up with a pint, boil all the way, or, or like I suppose like some kind of French sauce. You boil all these. I guess you boil things away, don't you, until you get the, until you get the essence of the thing. That's why I like. I like boiling things away and get the essence. But it's very infrequently that I have the good fortune to uh, be able to actually do that in a painting. Because I, I always I see it a little bit more than I really need to see. That's the, what I said before. Choice comes in there. So I mean, I, I, I fail to make the right choices. I should know if I knew it. If I I think Robert Henry says if you know what if you know what you want to paint, you can paint it like that. If you know what you want to paint, but the problem is you don't always know what you want to paint. And that's that's what's the problem with workshops. You, you you'd ask I could go up to a person now what is exactly you're trying to paint? Well, I'm trying. I was impressed by that tree. And you look at the picture, it emphasizes everything but the tree. You know, rocks, there's a house in it, there's a foreground with a puddle or something. You think, well, how, why in the world, if you love the tree, is it way up here in the right-hand corner? You know, it's barely in the picture. Well, it's because in front of them, of course, there's all this other junk. And they're sort of omnivorous. They just keep the whole thing, throw it all in there, you know, toss it in, throw it in. It's because um, you can't blame them, because why are you a painter? I mean, you're a painter because you're a visual person. So naturally, if you look out there, of course you see that tree, and you love that rock, too. Ooh, look at that rock. I think I want to paint that also. Isn't that great? And look at that building back there. Well, put that in there, too. Why not? I mean, I love this stuff. I, I just love to paint. <laughs> you have to get a grip on yourself. That's, that's the point. I mean, at some point, you have to say, wait a minute. Uh, let's, let's think this thing through here. Like, I, I'm not, I, there's no point in painting all this junk. What is the point of the picture? Why am I doing it? I mean, it's just, just becoming, It ends up being an a, a inventory. Like what's in front of me? You know, paintings are not inventories. You have to make some decisions. I, I think the most important word that re reoccurs throughout the art spirit is choice. Henry is always talking about choosing, and, ju and justice, judgment, justice. You know, you give each piece of, of the pot of the painting. It's it's the, the the part it deserves in the painting. That's the thing. Or it's like it's like running a running a um, office, being an office manager. You get all these characters running all over the place. You got to slow them down. You do this. You do that. You do this. And if you if you can't uh, if you can't designate, if you can't figure out who who deserves to do what, well, of course, then chaos descends upon you. You see. So paint, you can see paintings like that. It's chaotic. What kind of mind produced these paintings? A very chaotic, disorganized mind. But that's the nature. When we start painting, our minds are all chaotic and disorganized. That's why we can't. That's why we can't pick subjects. We go in front of nature, and it's the hardest thing in the world for us student to even just make a composition. Right? I mean, you know, we've been doing it for so long that you sort of go out there and I, I, could prob I could probably find some kind of composition almost any place. Maybe not a great composition, but I could find something out there. Just because you've done it so often. But if you haven't done it much, then gee, what am I going to emphasize? I'm surrounded by stuff. Oh, we know enough not to paint something. That's, that's, probably, that's probably even more important. Enough. Don't paint something. It seems like Inevitably, people who haven't had any experience paint the try to paint the least paintable thing in the whole landscape. How how could they be attracted to this totally uh, impossible? Th I couldn't paint it. You all come out and say I can't. I couldn't paint this dark tree against a dark rock, against a dark background, or against a dark foreground. I mean, there's absolutely no pattern, no design. There's absolutely nothing in this in this uh, thing that I that is paintable. You know, unless you're Rembrandt, of course. I mean, that's a different matter. A story I could probably make, but not us, not me. Not, not this person here. I mean, it's just, why are they attracted to that? I can't. I don't know if it's picturesque. It's a mystery to me. It takes a, a very hard to teach people to think in terms of patterns, isn't it? Patterns, light and dark. Squint your eyes. See something there. I mean, you, gotta, you, you can't pay unless you have all. Yeah, all you have to paint is colors and values. If you have any values, how, how you, value contrast? How are you gonna paint the darn thing? Unless, as I say, you're Rembrandt. Uh. It sounds. It sounds like your recommendation for people who would like to. Paint and, and but look at good paintings too, you know, and try to figure them out. I mean, you know, I mean, get somebody like Groupie is a perfect, great guy to study because what he's doing is very straightforward. His compositions are obvious, you know, once you look at them, they're very carefully balanced, and you can figure it out. I, I I'm not so sure looking at Soroy is going to help you much because Soroy is so advanced and so peculiar, you know, and they're kind of the composition is sort of oddball, you know. So I, I I don't think you I don't think you want to start with Soroy, but I'd start with somebody like like Mr. Groupie has nice. Straightforward compositions, or, or I'm trying to think who else would be good at that. I suppose maybe some of the, because mostly my guys, because you know up in up in Gloucester they were they were composers, 
No, I mean, you can't learn much in composition, but from looking at the looking at the California Impressionists, generally speaking, I mean, those guys don't really compose much. They have great color and everything, but I'd highly call them composers. Even the New Hope gang are, are not what you'd call brilliant composition guys. But my boys, I like to promote my own men, but Groupie and Kyle Peters and Lester Stevens and Hibbert, that's all they were interested in was composition. You know, I mean, they, they were composers. Probably more, more in the Cezanne line, but it's but um, hidden. You know? It's sort of design composition, but it's hidden underneath there. It's deep down inside, rather than right on the surface. If you if you take a groupie and you cut it down, if you could abstract it, you probably end up with something very abstract. A scheme they thought in very abstract terms, you know, groupie.